Buenos Dias Gunners Collective. Back at it, you already know. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. You like that shit, dubs. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Don't lie. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Like a motherfucking smack at it. Bye. Bye. Oh, the earth went in fire. As you can tell by who's sitting right next to me. He's not sitting next to me, but he's sitting next to me. You can't call it like an alcoholic. That's that homeboy right there, man. Make sure you tap into the most explosive channel on YouTube right now. The up and coming. He is taking over the YouTube genre, right? The homeboy Dubs is in the building, man. For those of you that don't know, now you know. And we thought it for no other reason. We know you guys like the collapse. We know. We know. Spend some life. You guys sit down. We're going to give you knowledge you can't get in college. Um, us being YA babies, I felt for no other reason. I said, you know what? I called Dubs like, hey, I got an idea. Let's each give them the most craziest YA story we remember from being locked up as a youth. And I mean, hey, in our era, it's it was crazier than prison. So without further ado, I'm going to let the homeboy Dubs go ahead and speak his, and I'm going to spit mine. We're going to let you guys in the comments, leave a comment who's was crazier. Okay. All right. Here we go. Look, check this out. So this story, this is from YTS, right? <clears throat> And I have to preface this by saying I was not in the unit when it happened. But this is something that was pretty vicious. And um, a lot of people remember it. And somebody even mentioned it in my comments. So I'm going to tell the story. So for those that don't know, YTS is a trade school. It was called a uh, Heman G-Star Youth Trade School, right? And they had everything. They had butcher shop. They had auto body. They had it was all trades. They just wanted to give you a damn trade, right? Well, at the time I'm telling you, talk, I'm, what I'm talking about, it was 38th Street and 18th Street were clicked up, and they were at war with Florencia. And I can't remember if it was Crazy Riders or Easy Riders. I want to say Crazy Riders, though. Yeah. And um, just so you guys understand, there was almost, there was over 60 dudes from 18 there. There was over 30 dudes from Florencia. The other two, 38, and, and Crazy Riders weren't as deep, but it, this thing was vicious. So every day when they would announce trade line, trade line, trade line, you go into that trade area, they let you in, no problem, right? But on your way out, there's metal detectors in two areas. And when you got in that line for the metal detectors, Everybody's head was on a swivel because if 38 and 18 saw Florencia and Crazy Riders, they were pulling knives out and they were butchering each other right there on the trade line. Well, this story goes like this. So after lunch, you go back to the unit and they'll announce trade lines, right? They get on the mic and they say trade line, trade line. And then they'll 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 announce which trades have been canceled. So they'll go down the list fast, you know. 406, 207, 208, 211. And they're, they're saying what's canceled. And they'll say yeah. five minutes to trade line release. Well, this day, they were announcing the trade line cancellations and all this, right? When they fucking open the doors in YTS, the cells are across from each other. And they, they just pull all the cells that, that have a trade all at once. And everybody yeah. comes out and you cannot see down the tier. It's bodies everywhere. Wow. There was a vato from Florencia. I'm going to even say his name this time. It's a white thing. Smokey from Florencia had trade. Because there was the, the guerra that, that there was, I, me, and, me and Smokey were in Paso together. And then he went to TS. Smokey slipped. They opened his door. And there was two vatos from 18 and one from 38. They were waiting on him. When, when, it, when they opened his door, they ran up in there and they started butchering him. Smokey's primo, puppet from Florencia, was in the cell across from him. And his trade was canceled. And he stood there and he was screaming for the Huras to open his door. And the Huras can't see down the thing. And he was telling them, I got trade. And they kept telling him, your trade is canceled. And mm -hmm. he had to stand there and watch as these three vatos were murdering his fucking primo. Butchering him. <laughs> and... They came out of the cell and they looked at Puppet and they laughed. And they were like, look at your primo. And they took off. And Smokey was laid out. They said he got up. He was able to like sit up on his rack. And his primo Puppet was yelling at him. 
Get out of the fucking cell, Holmes. Get out of that fucking cell and go to the day room. And in a daze, he made it out of his cell, made it all the way to the slider to go into the day room and collapsed. When he collapsed, they shut everything down. The helicopter came in. And the only reason why he lived was because his primo, who couldn't help him physically, was able to talk him into stepping out of that cell. Otherwise, them three would have caught a murder, and he would have died right there on the spot. Damn. It was a cold thing. It was uh, YTS was an ugly motherfucker. That's why people don't know why motherfuckers were getting butchered. Oh yeah, especially oh, YTS. Yeah. There was pieces. I mean, it was like this to have a you know. I don't know how it was impossible, but in, in Nellis, the beds were made out of the springs. Those springs? Yeah, we had those too. The whole fucking bed would be tied together with sheets. There'd be no more spring left. Well, no see, for us in Paso, like I know myself personally, what yeah. we would do, it's shut down now, so I can tell you. So, yeah. um, in Paso, we had righteous silverware. We had a yeah. spoon and a fork, right? Ooh. So, when you were done eating, you had to stack the four spoons and the four forks in the corner and then would come and the hura would scoop them up, right? Well, what we would do is we would put four spoons and three forks. We would put the forks in between the spoons. Yeah. And and if you're not paying attention, it looks like four forks. And then yeah. we would take the forks back to the unit, put a point on them, and that was our pedazo right there. Oh, yeah. You guys had some some righteous metal. We just had the picos. Yeah. But then, I mean, they were, they were it was metal. It was definitely metal, but and like I said, you would get to a bunk and you would go to jump on it, and it was all tied up with sheets. You were like, "Damn, they pulled all the metal off this one." <laughs> and you're looking at everybody like, "Where's it at?" And they're looking at you like, "Later, what?" You know, you gotta yeah. find out. So, um, the story I have to tell is this: um, shit, 93, 1993, very well-known story in Nellis. There was three incidents, two incidents that happened in Nellis. One that happened at TS that they used to always talk about. Um, I don't know if you were there when Novato from 18 got his throat cut and they put socks, his celly put socks down his throat to stop the blood and sat there and ate all his meals. I, I was already gone. That parole. That happened, though. That happened. Um, and they used to tell us about it. But anyways, so there was another incident that happened after I left. It's a very well-known incident. When the guards got overtook, they took the guards' keys and they went in and they stabbed a couple of northerners. In fact, I lost one of my homeboys in that one. But at this time, this was 1993. The Bulldogs had just separated from the Norteños. So it was still fun. It was funk season. It was going on. It was righteously uh, cracking. And uh, motherfuckers was getting off in the Menudo style, right? So I'm going to tell you right now that um, the Bulldogs were all on one side of the oil called TAP, which was a program. There was two lockdown programs there. There was Nixon, where they sent all the Southern Mexicans. Um, and then there was TAP, where they sent Northern and Southern Mexicans. And it was on each side of the building. One side of the building was Northerners or Bulldogs. And the other side was uh, so the Mexicans. Now there wasn't at this time. There was one Norteño that was back there. His name was Harley Beto from Madera. Beto from Madera. Um, he was very quiet, solid as fuck, but just a quiet dude that really didn't didn't cause no pleito with nobody. He we had a riot. He got involved in the riot. He actually hit a cop, and that's why they gave him a little. Uh, basically, it's like a, a shoe program, right? It's yeah. like a shoe. And so all the bulldogs, after they had got involved in different melees, riots, and and one on ones, and hitting cops, whatever they were doing. They would stockpile the bulldogs back there, and every time a bulldog would get there to the main line, his homeboys would get at him on paper, hey, this is where we're at. You need to report back here. You know what I mean? Get off fast. Prefer yeah. to get off on a Norteño if you can, and so come back here. So that's where the stronghold was. Um, so what they would do was they would bring them all out for showers. There was like five or six of them at the time back there. These were all heavy hitters. These were like Baltas that were like – they weren't just back there in that little shoe program, bro, for just fucking – you know, playing pencil pop. These boxes yeah. were really back there for using metal. They were they were all about that shit. Well, I remember one had come from, um, I think he came from Preston. His name was Bubba from Northside Preston. When he got there, everything changed. Everything changed. And it's like that, you know, certain bottles would get to a yarda, things change, right? Yeah. He's coming with, with cruel intentions, bad intentions. He's changing the game. And so this was someone that they looked to as like one of their older homeboys. He was probably like 16, 17 at the time. We're all 12, 13-year-olds, 14-year-olds. So he's a big dude. He's big. He's probably about 300 pounds. He was a big boy. So he yeah. comes walking in. He gets off, I think, on a placa or somebody um, and uses a piece, and they send him back there. Within the first couple of days, he's already back there with his homeboys. And we could hear, and I remember I would do time in the oil. So the way that Caja is, it's a big L. 
One side is the caja, the other side is taf. You could yell back and forth through the windows, the uh, uh, batter in the back, the mesh screens. And, you know, everyone kind of was in uh, uh, communication with you, we lies, whatever. Um, yeah. So we'd be trying to get at the homeboy Indio. He was in the back there. And uh, we'd be topping up with a couple of the batteries that we knew. You know what I mean? It was, you keep it professional, but when the doors crack, it's on. You know, you already knew. Um, there's some that used to run their neck back and forth, but that, that those are cell warriors. So anyways, um, what they would do was they would crack three or four cells open for shower time. Okay. Well, there was a bulldog that was there uh, named Dopey. Dopey had just pulled up. He was probably there a couple weeks. Um, and he didn't, he was one of those bulldogs. Now you got to understand at this time, there was a lot of perros that were not trying to give up the North today, meaning they weren't trying mm -hmm. to pull away. They still were undecided what they wanted to do. They still were like, Charlie, bro, that's prison stuff. This is why this is streets. This is, you know, we're not doing that, bro. And, and there was dudes like Bubba that were like, no, you're going to, you're going to do it. That's what it yeah. is. You know what I mean, you're going to conform to it. And uh, so he was one of the ones that wasn't. So he was doing time in the caja for a while, just in the hole. And I remember doing time with them. We used to shoot magazines back and forth. He'd chop it up with us, all the homeboys from Sol. And so they were feeling some type of way. They were feeling some type of way. So I guess eventually the uh, the staff realized that he was a bulldog. And they said, you know, we're going to put you over here with your homeboys. You're on the wrong side. But really what they didn't know was he was on the right side. He was leaning more towards staying with the North than going with the bulldogs. Um, and the bulldogs, I guess they kind of requested him over there. They got at the placa lake. We got a homeboy over there. They were trying mm -hmm. to bring him back. The old Folsom setup, right? Yeah. Right here. He's one of ours, right? They had already plot and planned that if he gave them the wrong answer to their questions, they was going to get him, right? So uh, he gets over there, and uh, they hit him up. They hit him up. Dreamer from Corcoran was there. Uh, he was a bulldog. Several other bulldogs. He wasn't involved in this thing, but he was there. And uh, I guess they hit him up. They're like, hey, are you a bulldog? Or are you this? He said, I'm a bulldog and that. And they said, you got to choose one or the other. And he was like, I ain't, I ain't choosing shit. This is where I stand. Um, you know what I mean? I'm from Isa Fresno, whatever. They said, okay, that's cool. That's cool. We, do what you do, bro. It's all good. We're going to give you the pass. They started sliding big old five inch, six inch pieces of metal back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. Because they knew the next day was showers and there was a rookie, a chick. There was a chick that was working. And what would happen was she would pop the, the next four cells. So two, four, six, that went with the four cells, there'd be eight people coming out, right? Mm -hmm. But a couple of those cells were single man cells. I think Shorty from Fresno was by himself. Bubba was by himself. Um, because there wasn't a lot of bulldog, they kept them kind of spread out. They didn't want them kind of communicating as much as they were, but they still were on up to par with what they were doing. So anyways, yeah. they bring Indio from Madera out, a Norteño. They bring out uh, a few bulldogs and this Valta Dopey from Fresno, right? Now, I would think that they would have booked Indio, right? Yeah. But they weren't tripping off Indio because, like I said, Indio, he was an actual Native American, very quiet, bro, was righteous. They got along with him. In fact, they approached him like, hey, you want to be a dog? He was like, nah, I'm just doing my own program. But he was never woofing. He never disrespected anyone. He's one of those bottles that blends into the wall. And he's just, yeah. you don't notice him. You know what I mean? He was a cool, he just draw, he was drawing, he was doing his own thing. So they weren't tripping off him. They had business to handle. This was their only chance, right? So the trippy part about this is they would bring you to the caja, the other side to shower. And this was a big shower room, bro, and had like big cage uh, uh, windows and a big iron door, and they would lock you in there. Well, that's where you got your program, too. So you got an hour out of your cell a day. Mm. It would be in there, in the showers. That was it. There's your program. They'll, fucking yeah. lock, you, they'll lock you in the shower, program time. Yeah. They'll hand you a hand, palabra. They'll hand you a handball to throw up against the wall in the showers. Now, it was, big, it was a big room, like the size of a living room, pretty big. And there was one area that had the, the six or seven nozzles going across the top for showers. Yeah. And then um, there was the benches, metal uh, metal benches on the side. So you'd go in there, bro. You take your shower, walk around with your towel like you're fucking in Folsom, you know what I mean? And think you're tough. And uh, wasn't no one doing no burpees or work workout back then. Everybody was walking around throwing a handball and chopping it up. Yeah. But uh, so what happened was this fucking rookie, usually what the black is supposed to do, she's supposed to stand right there. Not look at him, of course, but stand right there while they're showering and basically stay there and monitor their movements. Well, they knew that this rookie wouldn't do that. She was new. She would go down to the control tower and go chop it up with other placas. And, of course, she's a female. She's looking decent. She's younger. She's new. These other cops are not telling her, hey, do your job. They're, they're chopping it up. So, sure enough, they fucking took their metal out right here mm, with their rules. Because, you know, they, they yeah. put your hand cuffed up. So, they put their yeah. metal, boom, cuffed up. They're mobbing, right? They get to the shower. She locks them in. Sure enough, after about five minutes, she walks down. As soon as she walks down, that full dopey's in the shower washing his hair, bro. 
they just start booking him. Boom, boom. Now, hey, he's he's grunting. The big Bubba grabs grabs his mouth. They're just hitting him. Uh, uh. Um, they all caught cases over this. They all went to prison over this. Yeah, they went to prison. They caught the, the case, right? Yeah. Mm, mm, they're hitting him, bro. They're hitting him. She comes walking down. She screams. That kind of fucking stops. They start shoving the metal down the drain. You know what I mean? Trying to get rid of it. This fool's already laid out. They thought they killed him already. That was the intention to, to, to body him, right? They yeah. think he's already gone. Cool. Their objective's done. Um, they throw a couple kicks. They mob out. Um, Indio's sitting there like, oh, fuck. Are they coming for me next? They tell him this is not your business. It's bulldog business. He's like, fuck that, right? They told him, in fact, don't even take a shower, bro, because we're about to do our thing, right? He's like, all right, cool. He just minded his own business. She comes in, security cut everyone. They they met a flight of that guy out of there too. For like a year, he was in a, he ended up living. He survived because again, the hyena came and fucking she screamed and they got off of him. But they were they were hitting him. They probably hit him about 12, 13 times. Yeah. With five inch pieces of metal all the way in. They were digging him. You know what I mean? Um yeah. a lot of people say to me, they say, Hey, why why wasn't there a lot of bodies? Like a lot, there was a lot of stabbings, but not a lot of bodies. We were young kids. You know, motherfuckers that hit you, but they weren't digging. But this yeah. was an incident where these guys were fucking digging all the way. They were they were trying to kill him. You know, that was their intentions. They weren't just going just to hit him. Mm-hmm. You know, they were trying to they were trying to do him dirty. It was it was and then when we found out about it, we were like, fuck that. These fucking bulldogs are different. <laughs> <laughs> it was a legendary in there. Even the South Side, we'd chop it up. They were like, damn, bro, fucking the bulldogs are fucking. So we had kind of like a pack. And from that day on, serio. People don't know this. Not even the Bulldogs. I'm about to put it out here for the first time. On our compa that I was on, um, I was on Kennedy at the time. We had a pact with the Southsiders like, hey, if any Bulldogs come on, we're going to eliminate them. We're, we're, we're moving. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and then the one time that we did it, when I ended up going transferring to Madison, and the one time that we let, well, one came, and I told the story before, Dreamer from Corcoran. He booked yeah. me, right? I, I let uh, Spook stay. And he was a youngster. He didn't know what was up. And I told him, hey, your homeboys, you got to report back, bro. Your homeboys are back there. You know what I mean? Go ahead. And I was trying to pump him up. Go get off on Negro from Pomona 12th Street. Because I told Negro, <laughs> hey, because I told Negro, hey, I'm going to send this foot to get off. Book is that right? I was trying to set, do the setup, right? And Negro was like, bring him in the shower area. Well, me and Sparky from B&E will blast him, right? Yeah. And so it was called the way it worked in Y. You know, everybody just wanted Why to see it was something. was treacherous. Yeah, it was treacherous. Everybody wanted to see something happen. Yes. And so I was trying to get him to go back there so the, the South Sides could book him, eliminate him. And if and if they went in, down in the process, we were good, right? So, yeah. Um, but in that, that fool was like, nah, nah, he was scary. So it was like, all right, kick it. He ended up being a righteous dude. Like, he was he was about it. He just was young. He didn't know what was up. Yeah. And then as soon as they released Dreamer from the oil, now you got to understand, he came from that group, that fucking, mm-hmm. the motherfuckers are like the fucking Folsom 7 right there. They were crazy, yeah. right? Yeah. He came from that group. With already the fucking, you know, with already the dictation to to hit somebody. And uh, he tells me, I've talked to him so many times, this is my homeboy. He tells me, hey, bro, you were not the target. There was a different target. But I the show seemed like I was the target that day. You know what I mean? <laughs> there was no one else there. It was just me. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? And he was smart. And he, he, he came with his medal from there. He had it taped to his hand and everything, bro, so he couldn't drop it. So he was committed, yeah. you know? Yeah. And uh, he ended up hitting me, a couple other northerners, and a placa. Damn. Like oh, yeah, he hit the he hit, he hit the homeboy Spanky from Gilas in the head. He hit me in the arm. Uh, he hit the homeboy Bad Boy from Sakura, and then he uh, the placa tried to get in. I think he hit the placa's arm too. Um, so yeah, he oh. he it started in the day room. Or we we're just walking down when we got off. Um, I ran at Spooks and rushed Spooks, so I'm getting off with Spooks in the day room, and he ran to the back of the dorm and just started stabbing people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. bro. So, it that was, was it was a crazy story. I know that there's probably a lot more crazy things that we didn't see, mm-hmm. you know, over the eras, over the times. But I truly believe, bro, those were a couple of the I mean, the one you said that's his primo having to watch it, you know what I mean? That was the cool part of that story. And then I mean, he they got that helicopter there just in time, and that fool was gonna die, you know. What yeah. I mean? Um, but yeah, that that's the worst part. You know, and Puppet, like, a lot of a lot of his own homeboys didn't like him, but Smokey was all right. But imagine watching your own primo, and you can't get out of the cell. And you're in that little tiny square fucking window just looking and seeing and that just, shit. And they're booking him. They're booking they were him. dogging him. And motherfuckers over there, they wouldn't book you like this. They're booking you like Michael Myers. They were, they're, hey, they're, they're booking you. Yeah. They were trying to kill him. It was, yeah, hey, they were not playing over there. No, nah, hell no. Nah. Hey, T.S., 
I remember they used to uh, they used to threaten us with TS. We'd be in the oil. We'd get off. Oh, we'd go to the square. And they'd be like, "Hey, we're gonna send you North Angeles to TS." I'd be like, "Fuck that!" Yeah, no, they had they had bottles in R and R. See, like, so YTS was run like when when we hear stories about how the joint was back in the seventies. Yeah, the 80s, not, that's all. So when you got off the bus, when you got out the van in YTS, right, and you went into R and R, the Huras don't even pay attention. They'll tell you talk to them, the inmates. They run the they run the thing. They yeah. come, a homes where you a hey, they and they were waiting because they wanted to know. They they had weapons in there. They were a homes where you from? Where did you come from? And where are you from? The wrong yeah. answer. They were gonna try because dudes got killed in R and R and YTS several times. Oh yeah, they don't play. Nah, they had they had one one dude get killed over there, um, but it was gang banging. He yeah. said where he was from, and the bottle was like all right here. Handed him his roll, and he bent down to put it down. And the bottle hit him over the head with a weight. He had a, a weight and a towel already under the, the YTS was fucking off the hood. Hey, that what people what the way I look at YTS and what people will never understand, they'll never understand YTS. It was like the black hole in between prison and YA. Yep, that's exactly what it was. It, Chino was what next TS door. Was. Yeah, it was Chino yeah, Chino was right door. next door. So they a lot of their shit was from Chino. So it was uh it was like a fucking uh, a, a matrix in between YA and prison and that fucking played YA games and craziness, but with the serialness of prison too, meaning no, they take it all like the, the way. They ran it like the joint, eh? Because that was crazy. When you would get off, they would walk you straight into Chino. And then there were dudes that caught white uh prison time in YA when they were 18, they would send them to Chino, they do two or three years and then come back till they were 25. And then they were so they were bringing they were bringing the reglas from prison back into YTS. Oh, yeah, that's why right, that's right. Hey, TS was <laughs> hey, they used to say straight out all that battery packing and all fist fist fighting, and all that. Now nah, we're whacking motherfuckers around here. Yeah, straight metal. Yeah. And, and not cutting them, putting metal in some. Yeah. Like, even in YA, we we never even thought of tomahawks or RVs or whatever they call them. We yeah. that was even on like I think I seen someone get sliced and it was just like a little thin slice, it was nothing. And we were just like, nah, bro, we're using metal, like we're we're yeah. We and we got there. People were using batteries and soap, and I said, "Fuck that! We're getting bricks and rocks and putting them inside." Yeah, like, no, yeah. I seen a dude. I seen a dude. Uh, he said he wasn't gonna follow the rules. Eh? Uh, you know, he got ran down. He was a big ass dude. And he was like, "Hey, homes, that's for you guys. Hey, I do what I want." And, oh, okay, homes, Spencer, we didn't know that. And we went on a movement, and one of the homies pulled the head of a, a sprinkler system mm. off and cracked his head wide open that night. And told him, "There, there you go. Now you can run your own program." Yeah, there, there you go. Yeah, it was different, man. Hey, yeah. and a lot of the Africanos, they'd be seeing us get get off, and they'd be like, "Damn, you essays are crazy." Yeah, was, hey, there was there's a few Africanos. There was what D Dog from Hoover, man. Shout out to respects. He was a fucking maniac in YA, and then there was a uh, Tiny Solo from Matrix Against the Crib. He was with the business. There was several Poe Daddy from uh from Hoover. Um, but for the most part, man, it's like we had no choice. We had no choice. And then and the Sasars, they just they they it was like they loved it, you know. <laughs> 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 it was crazy hey but you know what they did i never seen no one click up but what i seen when i was in ellis a lot every time playboys florencia or 18 got in the building it went off all the time they rushed each other like they were always fighting each other those I three games i don't know if it was the same in ellis but i know one thing every friday the 13th mm -hmm. in Basel, all of the f gangs any f gang mandatory had to rush their enemies Oh, wait, yeah. Well, I, I don't even remember to be like that. I remember mandatory kicked off. It, something always kicked off on, on like New Year's Eve, Friday the 13th, like holidays like that, 4th of July. It, it's even, it would either be in the school area or on the compas, something would kick off, whether it be with us or with the blacks or with, the, it just was always something. Yeah. Um, it was like, it was party. That's what, that was the party right there. And yeah. hey, we're going to get off full party time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Make the placas yeah. work. They come, mace everybody, throw you in the van, take you to the caja. And then bring you back the next day, and you know what I mean. Then hey, you come back, and then the next day in the day room, everyone's throwing fucks because their shit got jacked. All the Africanos <laughs> jacked their shit. <laughs> we had lockers in ours, fool. Yeah, see, we didn't have locks. They wouldn't give us locks. Yeah. We'd, have, we'd have killed people with those. Oh no, we had locks, and and they were used. Yeah. Oh yeah, they never gave us locks. It was just you're just locked as one of those ones that click, click, click like that, and that was it, bro. And I remember some little dude, bro. They pumped him up. He stole the uh, two bars of my soap. I had Lever two thousands. And he stole them, and I was—I never got stolen from, and I didn't have much, bro. Why? So what I had, I knew exactly what I had. Yeah. So I looked, and I was like, "Ah, oh, bro, they got me, right?" My homie was like, "Damn." So I told this guy, uh, he was from uh, 
he was from uh, Coachella, a uh, little Indio, short dude from Coachella. I said, hey, bro, did your homies get me? And he was like, hey, that little new dude came in, bro. He's like a fuck. He's a resident or something. I don't know. We don't we don't really fuck with him, bro. I think he was over there by your locker. So I hit him. I throw a fuck. And he jumped up, reject, right? And I fucking <laughs> cracked him with a brick. Ah, motherfucker. <laughs> Spanish kid, he fell. I did four days in the way for that and came out. They didn't even, yeah. they didn't even give me a fucking. And people they don't understand. Care. Yeah, they didn't give a fuck. Four days later, I was back. He was back too with stitches. We're chilling. Yeah. Hey, yeah. talking about, hey, talking about you want the one on one? Nah, I'm good. All right, cool. Boom. They dropped yeah. them live off for that. For stealing. Yeah, yeah for stealing. Yeah. Anyways, man, with that being said, man, those are a couple stories, man. It's getting late. Dub's got to work tomorrow. Um, I got to do a whole lot of other shit. So, man, like I always say, you already know what it is, man. Um, with that being said, go out there and get it, man. Do what you got to do for your familia. Only you can do it. Only you will do it for them. You know, I'm going to continue to strive and struggle and do what I does, and that's bring together all Rasa in unity. You know what I mean? As you can see, me and Dubs, we're trying to establish and accomplish that. And at the same time, man, support each other, man, and support everybody. Support the brown people. You already know what it is. And we're going to let Dubs end it with his little saying. Be safe. Be smart and tell the ones you love that you love them. Manuel style. Exactly, man.